first note is from the manager of the house, Oprah Chavez, that did his best to make sure that said her kiddish Abdullah had got to shul. And the first time they took him to shul, they had no idea that he knew every word to everything and sang every single part of God. This is from Steve. And Steve, if you're on here now, there are no words, and my heart breaks for you as much as it does for us. I've been reeling from the past day, trying to make sense of something, something which I can't, trying to figure out how to accept something which I am not capable of accepting. And amongst it all, there is one clear thought that keeps running through my mind, and it's a thought that reflects a lot of what I have been hearing about Zeb in this past day. When Zed first came to Casino, it's a big one house across the street from here, and it's a very big And many of the staff were actually scared. We had never cared for someone to fight their death before, and we didn't know if we could, Rachel. Within a short period, within a short period, we came to learn what you already knew. We didn't care for Zed, we cared for us. Sure. We may have helped him with some physical needs. We may have helped him doing some things in life, but he helped give us life. He brought life to all of us. He made life meaningful and worthwhile. He brought excitement and love for everyone and everything. Our home is named Base Ezra, the house of help. But Zeb wasn't in our home because he needed help. He was there to help us. Zeb probably didn't know this, but like many families, our home had suffered and been her family in the past couple of years. A lot of brightness in our home and the people who lived there had dimmed during this hard period. And Zeb, for however short a period, there was a brilliant light for all of us, a true gift. For joy and purity, laughter and singing back to our family in a way that only we could. For his healing and warmth, hugs and affection, excitement and infectious joy. I wish I could say something to console all of his family and friends, but I don't think that's possible. I'm realizing this isn't a letter of consolation, it's a letter of gratitude. I am writing to thank Zeb and all of you for helping us. Thank you for sharing the spark of pure life that is Zeb and the spark of pure love that is your family with ours. The deepest sorrow, condolence, and gratitude. Zeb, Steve, Eliezer, Bushman. From Zed's own health staff, we are all who we were all heartbroken when we received the devastating news that Zed had passed this morning. Zed meant so much to us at Casina and so much to his friends and residents of the home. When we walked into our shift in the home, every one of us was greeted with a full, happy smile and a warm hug from Zed, who would then go on to tell us any special news or events that had taken place while they were gone. <laughs> Zeb loved each staff member and each staff member loved Zeb. Zeb had several physical disabilities that required assistance from staff, but the, but the satisfaction that we all received from Zeb for helping such a kind, sweet person make every effort well worth it. Zeb loved many things in life. He loved talking with his mother, father, and family members over FaceTime on his iPad. He loved playing with the various games and toys he had, and he loved reading that I spy book. He loved going to school, he loved dining, he loved interacting with friends, staff, and fellow residents. I remember how quietly Zeb sat and how much Zeb enjoyed it when we took him to school, and he knew the name of the chazan. He knew the tune the chazan was singing. I think it was Zed's innate sincerity and pleasantness that made him so liked in life and so loved in our home. When Zed first came into our home, the staff were concerned about Zed, how Zed would get to sleep on, 
time, given that it, this would be grooming, grooming had a routine of gardening very loudly until late hours of the night. This had disturbed other residents in the home, but this resident did not understand that he needed to quite die, quite, to die in quietly so others could sleep. Deb was actually going to ruin this resident and we all waited that first night to see if the dying noise would stop Deb and if he would be able to sleep. When it was time for him to go to sleep, however, his roommate, let's ask him, put down the sitter and stopped dying for the night so Deb could go to sleep. It was clear to us that this roommate liked Deb, cared for Deb enough to stop his daily routine. Because Zeb is such a likable person, so pleasant to be around, and because of his sincere character. Zeb was very happy to, share, happy to share his games with others, and was always so patient to those around him, and rarely at all complained. Despite having the disabilities that he had, he was so happy, so full of life. This alone is a powerful lesson we can all take from Zeb. We will always remember your warm hugs and welcomes. We will always remember your sincerity, your present pleasantness, your love of Torah, your care for those around you, your patience, and you will always remember your richness in life. May your neshama go straight to Olam Papa, and may the chef console your family with the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. I'm not coming back. I'm not sure I did. I'd like to call on Maria to represent our place. Just I want to thank Maria Fidelli from that first phone call to cut the flesh and the honor of sharing that with us. We knew it was the right thing to do. Staff has a little catch up that we caught up with in 24 hours of being said. But um, the, the honor of sharing him, of having him, the pleasure he brought to the home, like, like, like the staff said, the life he brought home, we, we had many losses of the house in the last year. Um, and Zeb brought in an amazing light to the home. And Zeb proved once he moved in, he proved how right everybody was in making this choice. Zeb enjoyed every minute and every day being in that home. He had a similar idea that he shared with all staff. He taught all staff. We had a non Jewish staff last week just to pop the law when he was coming to eat breakfast near his home with us. And it was keep out that law. And he was going to sit down to eat. And one of the staff of the speakers that came in and says, no, 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 can't eat yet. And he put the kippah on his head. And Deb, of course, smiled and laughed with him. Um, every single staff, he created a beautiful atmosphere for him. And the staff all made a pact that they were going to continue that beautiful, wonderful atmosphere. He spread his light. I saw yesterday how he spread his light. He spread his light to everybody. And he will continue to spread his light. And his words to everybody. Zeb, we are sorry if there's anything we did. We ask for you for the But we know that you've had a very good life and we're so happy that you enjoyed the system to be with us. Let's call upon Cousin Harrison, thanks. That feels like it was just a few days ago that we were standing together at our my wedding. We were dressed up in all the things like the Kush Mandel, face mask, face shield, gloves, and probably some other hidden gems. And despite the fact that we couldn't see your smile and you couldn't feel the touch of our hands, your joy, love, and excitement put up the roof. During my cousin's dish, which you weren't at because the band was still playing music by the Alice East Column, and you would not have given up your spot next to her for the world. I'm totally happy with that. I shared a piece of Torah that I thought I understood in that day, but today 
this week, I gave an entirely new perspective. In the end of the sentence, the rebels, the Bernard records different personal tefillah that the Tanayim would add to the end of their dot. Rebels tefillah says, this tongue twister tefillah confused me. Prior to my creation, I was not needed. And now that I've been created, as if I've not been created, what does this mean? Where Cook offers an explanation of the video where he breaks down each piece of this phrase. Prior to my creation, prior to Hashem's creation of me, there was no need for me in this world. Because if there was, Hashem would have created me. In the second part of this video, which I don't think is relevant to you directly, but we can learn a tremendous lesson directly from you, from this part. Now that I've been created, as if I've not been created. Rukuk explains that Rabbi's prayer has come from a place of a feeling of lack. He had felt that he was lacking in the fulfillment of the mission of this world, and that the need in his world that he was sent here for, a catalyst his creation, was not being fulfilled. Rabbi then continues to plead on for the clarity of his mission and to procure life the absence of sin. He said, Every single moment of your life, you will fulfill your mission in this world. We say this to you in the image on Ezra and the Kipper. In the side of the Shulman Ezra, which I know you didn't like much of the new stuff in the repetition. <laughs> and I know that I'll be thinking of you this year when I think of this field. Striving to have the clarity and success that you have had in the mission of this world. Missions cannot be put into words or captured in speech. Zebby, you woke up every morning singing. I remember when I slept a little time in the house at the very end of the town. And I never woke up with a bigger smile on my face that day. Making sure the answer comes on as loud as possible so that we should hear the morning routine concerts so we can hear. We brought joy and happiness to every person who met you. We were able to create a true relationship with every person in your life after just a few words of change. Whenever I had the privilege of sitting with you in shul or the challenge of trying to push you out of shul, I was just overwhelmed by how many people needed to come over and ask how you're doing. I felt like a true celebrity with you. Actually, that's not true. I felt like you were a true celebrity and I was your bodyguard. <laughs> These past two days, trying to process the magnitude of the lives that have touched, I began to wonder to myself. I thought that I always had a special spot in that story. We are more than just cousins, we are best friends. And the more people I hear from and speak to, the more I realize that to everybody else, you are also their best friend. You have the ability to make every single person feel special. If they were in the hugging striking zone, they were going to get a hug, regardless of how well you meet them. The impact that you've had on me and my family is measurable. Just this morning, I was reflecting with my parents and Jody and Sam. How much you have shaped us as a family? In, in the way that we view the world, in the way that we view and treat other people, and in the way that we're involved in our communities and the people around us. Max and Carl. Carl, sorry. Thanks for letting me use that as a You not only showed us our own strengths, but you showed us how to see the strengths of everybody around us. The butterfly effect that you have had on the world is in, is in, in, immeasurable. The pieces of you that will live on each one of us will continue to positively impact the world at large, whether you're cognizant of it or not. And the, words cannot be to capture my appreciation and sheer awe of the way that you've raised this care for several of these years. Nobody knows the countless hours of emotions that you poured into him behind closed doors, allowing us all to benefit from his existence in this world and from his clean shaven chin. <laughs> Seeing how you cared for me every single day broadened my perspective to how much a loving parent can be to their child. Uncle Ellie told him, Cheer up, thank you for all that you did for me, for all the love and care you for me. <clears throat> Although I wasn't the only one to be on the receiving end of your hugs, I am convinced that you did help me a little bit stronger than some other people, because I would never say stop. That's enough. You're going to choke me. I would let you choke me. I never want other hugs today. I'm going to miss our hugs. Your arms locked around my neck. Your freshly shaded sheets to the back of my hand. Your two hands up in the air, excitement every time I walk into the door as if you had just won the lottery. You say, funny age, your signature's every way, to everything I would say. Or asking whose car is outside, even though you didn't see us pull up. Zev, you lived a life where every day you would carry your mission. You touched the lives of so many people, and you continue to touch the lives of people, and you that they build up on all of us, both consciously and subconsciously. I miss you, 
If we start from the end, we see that Hashem says a beautiful Hashem back with me that she got. It's the proof from Shemaim that we all knew that Zev had the most beautiful Neshama and his ability, as we just heard from so many people, to influence all around him to become better. We learned about hugging, about showing love, about noticing others and caring for others. And what was amazing was the feedback he always gave. It was immediate, and like everyone said, just made you feel so good. And he cared so much about you meaning whether you that person was in front of him right now. Last year, Zev saw I hurt my arm since he saw it was in a sling. And he would always make sure to ask any family member he spoke to how my arm was doing. And when I visited him, he immediately started pointing out that my sling wasn't on, even though he'd only seen it on the video. And uh, he remembered it, it was important to me. So most of our relationship was through video, as we were here, and as that saw heard someone in the background of one of those video calls, without seeing them, he immediately identified them, and he forced them to stop whatever they're doing to come and say hi. Sometimes I might be busy, but he wouldn't let me off without it, and he had to greet me, and I'm probably sorry that I didn't do it more often. He took careful attendance of us. Fascinatingly, we didn't visit as a family that often, but he had all of us down pat. He never confused families. He never confused people. He always knew who to ask for what. And his ears were really sharp. You learn that the hard way sometimes, as he heard everything, and Miriam talked about that last night, that she had told us that story even before, when she thought he didn't know that Tova was coming from Pesach, but he knew. And especially love the way the story ended, and he immediately had to share that information. It wasn't something to just make him happy. It was something that he had to call his father and say, I was coming. To me especially, since I lived for so many years far away, God just had time with my father. Whenever I would speak to my father, he would always tell me how special Zev is and what a sweet person he is. And the truth is, the two of them were a really great match. They both had these tremendous people that we heard about Zev and we heard a year and a half, a year and a few months ago, how they treated others and it didn't matter who they were, without judgment, just pure love and appreciation. And the hugs they both gave, I was actually just thinking about that after we discussed it. Did Daddy improve his hugs because of Zev, or was it genetic that Zev just got it from Daddy? But the, the fact that these hugs from the two of them were very special. And as Miriam said, I said it and I'll repeat it, the thought of imagining when Zev passed away, to see Daddy bringing him up to his new place, proudly introducing him to everyone, telling him, this is my grandson, Zev. This is also a time to speak to Zev's immediate family. You all did so much for him, and he accomplished so much, as we've, as we've heard, even more than I know and knew until I heard. He knew everything, even though he didn't show it. And the love you gave him, you, you gave him, was what I could have probably asked of you when he gave you a special neshama for these past 30 years. That love helped him be the loving and gloomy person that he grew to be. You truly fulfill your shlichut as his parents and siblings. Ellie, I love seeing these Miro and Zed on Shabbos, and I know that you taught them too. And it was really cool and was a lot of fun. Miriam, you were there for him. You never tired of finding the best care for him trying to make sure that he was in bed, advancing in the best possible way, and the countless emergencies and hospital visits, and always handling them with hardly a complaint. He was the sharpest dresser, your influence, obviously. <laughs> Tova and Shiro, you had a lot of ass for you in your childhood, but you were there to always help while being amazing loving sisters to your dear brother. Mommy, or Bobby, as I've called you, you gave so much to Zev. You and Daddy moved to help with him, and you were always there when needed to move in and be with him or just visit. 
But of course, you have the merit of being the last one to be with him and have a wonderful visit with him. It's unfathomable to imagine the tragedy of losing your brother, son, grandson so suddenly with no warning. We can only turn to our village brother and ask that he be the one to help us all through this period and have the strength to move forward. When people ask me how old was Debbie, my answer is around 30 years old. He was not a regular 30 year old that had just passed away. He was a 30 year old who lived a life filled with trials and tribulations that most 75 year olds didn't have to contend with. And he bore those to be serene with Kavura. That a normal person could not possibly withstand. The truth is that he really lived a long life. He achieved a rechut yamin shamin, more than the average person. Doctors never thought he would make it past one day of birth, but he defied logic and he did. They didn't think he would make it to his first birthday, and yet Zeb set out strong and he did. They didn't think he <clears> would <throat> make it another year and another year. Progressing at his own relative stages, he made it to his bar mitzvah, and what a glorious bar mitzvah it really was. And he continued, thanks to his wonderful care and love, especially by his mother and father, to develop and live Baruch Hashem another year, and another, and another. There were obstacles, many obstacles, surgeries, and treatments he needed to overcome, and he did with the ultimate Gura. Although Zeb lived a short life, he had an impact on so many people as if he had lived a lot longer. As you can see, but all the people who were at the Levi yesterday, uh, Monday night, and in Zoom, and here, just shows his impact. And that's truly that he lived longevity and not a short life. When I think of Zeb's life, the first thing that comes to mind is the part that we say in Muni. <laughs> Each and every day that Zen lived was truly a miracle. The Yad of Hashem. And when Hashem chose to bring him back closer to him, he did it in the way mentioned in Parsha Fuka, last week's Parsha for us, this coming week's Parsha in Chutzmarat, the way that Aaron HaKohen HaGadol died, the way that Miriam HaNeviyah died. Also in Russia, and the way that Moshe Rabbeinu desired and ultimately died at the end of the Torah. What was this special death? The Torah says in Russia, Kafit Aharon, Bet Alazar, Beno, the Hal Otam for Ahar, the Hashet and Aharon, the Tigada, the Ashtan and Alazar, Beno, the Aron Yaset and Risha. And Rashi and Ayatasa says, they that's the way that the Zebi left this world. Just like Aaron and Miriam and Moshe. As my brother said, And just like by Aaron, the Torah tells us, by Kuoto call the Israel, so too we mourn our beloved Zebi. Call baby Israel. Because anyone who knew him loved him because he gave unconditional love to all. Just like Aharon, he touched so many people literally and was really loved by all. But there's another feel that comes to mind when I think he said. Every morning when we awake, we say, Hashem, every day gives us back our beautiful and pure shaman. But what do we do during the day? We speak a little Lashon Hara, 
We don't always have to run and dominate. You may even forget to say a Rafa Mishana or a Rafa Brona here and there. And I'm sure the list goes on and on. How many of us, at the end of the day, can return our Mishana as pure as the moment we receive? I know one of us who did this every day. Said every single day of his life was pure and unblemished. Being happy and greeting everyone with sacred coming in the folk with a smile from ear to ear. And this connects to another aspect of the timing of Zebedee and Thomas. The first part of the Rasha discusses the Chok of Paraduma. Most of the explain that the Paraduma is a Chok because of the many details of the ritual which we do not understand. The most famous is that the para defiles the tahor while it purifies the tame, or the fact that it is slaughtered outside of the Azara of Ekonikash. Rabbi Rav Salvechik writes that the whole aspect of para Duma is death itself. Death is a trauma that disturbs man's serenity and undoes all of man's rational planning, dreams, and hopes. In the words of the Torah, Zot Chukat Torah, what is the whole? Adam Kiyom. While each and every day was a miracle of life, we have become so used to it that we expect it to have to just continue and to defy logic and live longer and longer, regardless of the chok of Mita. There is a fundamental difference between the usual Tahara process and the Tahara of Paradigma. The normal Tahara process involves Tfila in a mikvah or Mayim Chayim. However, the Tahara process of the Paradigma requires Two things, to be loud and hazaya, sprinkling the water of the para of the month. There is a significant difference between these two acts. To be loud, a person must perform for himself for each word. But hazaya must be done as someone else sprinkling water upon him, the lumechata. Similarly, there were so many things that Zeb decided to do for himself. He chose to be happy to greet everyone with a smile, to shake everyone's hand, to give Zebi hugs, to take your hand and rub it with on his cheek, to remember everyone's name and more. Here Zeb taught us what is real happiness without any words, the yot, the simchatim. But there are also things that Zeb could do for himself and he required assistance. And here, there are numerous people who assisted him with love and care. Ellie provided the song the devotion of taking care of him and providing for him the loving and loving him for, all, for, all, for who he was. Mommy, my mother, Bobby, always being there to lend a hand, visit and sit and play with Zeb whenever necessary, and even maybe whenever not necessary. My father, Allah Shalom, was always so proud to have Zeb by his side, feeling him to shul and out, changing his own seat he could sit right next to Zeb, making sure that he could be the one to uh, get that very precious. Tova and Shira, your devotion to Zeb, there and even afterwards, through Facebook, through FaceTime, excuse me, is <laughs> uh, what's really uh, special and keeping that connection even though you we weren't no longer living in that. If they say behind every successful man is a great woman, so behind every successful child is a devoted mother. Miriam took care of everything for Zeb efficiently, gracefully, with an understanding of his well-being that has allowed us to enjoy Zeb for these many years. From the food processing, to the game purchasing and playing, to coaxing him to eat, say words, walk from place to place, we have done it all, the Chochmah I want to thank you, Zeb, on behalf of so many people, for all of the things you have taught us by your example, loving unconditionally, always being happy, saying a person's name, even if it was screaming them across the room, thanking people for everything and how to give a real hug, not the fake ones most of us give. The picture that I have in my head now is different from the one my brother painted when we were talking. He imagined my father, Rabbi Shalom in Shalai, Pushing Zebi in the wheelchair, both and smiling ear to ear. I picture them walking hand in hand, both without any difficulty whatsoever, having conversations, 
smiling ear to ear, and having the contest who can give the title speech. May Hashem give you, Miriam, Ellie, Tova, Danny, Shira, and Josh, Mommy, all of, and all the aunts and uncles, the Kochot, to follow Zev's lead, to be happy, to reflect on all the good times with Zev, and may he now look out for us. Viva Hamad Ganetza, Mach Hashem Bimam Yalko. Perek the time that they did. If not, I'm not going to bring it up to the city board. אנחנו ניסע עם רכב, מי שרוצה ללכת ברגל, אפשר ללכת ברגל, זה קצת קשה, אבל אנחנו נוסעים בכביש כל הזמן ישר.
Don't worry, it's going to take some Danny's time there. Yeah, I know. But they told me I'm supposed to. Oh, he said that. Yeah, what do you want? Hmm? Oh, the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Someone he may have gotten into a car already. No, he got into somebody else's car.
Watch yourself.
For all those on Zoom, we're doing our best to try to get the service back. There's no Wi-Fi there. So we're trying to get the video going, the audio going. Please be patient. Um, we're doing the best that we can. <laughs> 